Jose Young's here with MMAfighting.com, speaking with Roxanne Modifari at the UFC 246 media day ahead of her fight against Macy Barber. Now, before we get into the actual fight, uh, you and I have talked a few times off camera about our mutual love for Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I'm rocking the silver hair per usual. You rocked the silver hair for your weigh-ins last time, if I'm not mistaken. And you were telling me that you were, you were every time you weigh in, you get the next kind of level of the Saiyan wig. If I'm remembering correctly, that silver's the end of the Saiyan line, right? Of the Super Saiyans. Am I, am, am I mistaken this? Am I wrong is basically what I'm saying. You are not wrong, but um, this time I have something else very special planned. A little different twist to my hair choice. Any, any, any hints, nothing, or you want to just keep that on the back burner for now? Well, let's just say that um, I've been working with, uh, in addition to my head coach, John Wood, I've been working with uh, AJ Matthews. He's a Muay Thai specialist. He's uh, kind of like a little dark side, mm -hmm. and I've been feeling a little of that energy, so I might go a little dark side this time. Well, I do want to ask you too, because I remember you as being one of, because I've been a weeb pretty much my whole life. You've been one of the original weebs of the of the MMA scene. You and Alex Caceres pretty much, but now you see guys like Israel Adesanya, Michael Venom Page. I don't know if you watched his Ryzen fight. He walked out in the, oh, in, so in, with, the with the the robe and the Hidden Leaf Village and everything. So what do you make of this all of a sudden rise in these uh, these anime fans are now at the forefront and winning these championships in MMA? I'm really, really excited that fighters, you know, um, can show that they're really into anime and anime is cool now. Of course, I think it's cool. Sure, sure. Um, you know, other other fighters, you know, are doing the the cosplay and the. I think uh, Israel had his Naruto hand sign yeah. that was very impressive. I've tried to remember that; it's very difficult. Um, yeah, the Akatsuki walkout was yeah. super cool. I think it's he really did. Cool. I think he did the um, the death note before his, his fight against Robert Whitaker too. He wrote it down and he did it. So this has got to be just a treat for you to see. Like you you did this before all of them, but I totally started all of this. <laughs> well, you sound Alex Caceres was like I did that first, guy, So you and Alex Caceres might have a bone to pick with both. Yeah, we're both, maybe similar time. Sure. He and I. Yeah, he's cool. We've chatted. And when you fought, I think in July 2018 here at the Ultimate Fighter finale, I asked you like, what what is it about Dragon Ball Z that you do like? And you gave a very interesting answer where you said you very much um, re related with Vegeta because he always came in second, and that really stuck with me because that wasn't that wasn't the answer I was expecting. Is that so? I, I basically, can you expand on that? Um, I mean, I would rather not like rather not be like Vegeta because I want to be first, right? But um, yeah, I don't know, the whole series, like I relate a little, I relate to Vegeta, but also to Goku, you know, where he has a pure heart, he just wants to fight, just wants to get stronger, you know, protect his family, protect the world, um, the whole thing. And you are fighting Macy Barber on Saturday. And looking at just your records, you obviously debuted in 2003. She debuted in 2017. You've probably been training martial arts in general longer than she's been alive. So uh, what was your first, like, when did she get on your radar pretty much? Uh, I watched her fight. You know, uh, I forget exactly which event it was, but um, I was impressed with her ability to get the job done and to just win her fights, you know, um, she still has room to develop, of course, as a fighter, but, you know, don't we all? Sure. But, man, she was strong, and she, she beat her opponents up, so it was impressive. Well, I was going to say this question for the end, but you kind of brought it up. You've been fighting, like I said, for almost 20, 20 years professionally. So what what let... I asked this to Overeem, what else can you learn at this point in your career that you haven't really seen because you've been doing this for so long? I have so much to learn, and actually, um, a few months ago, I was kind of struggling with trying to find the most perfect technique for the situation in training. So like if I was holding someone up against a wall, you know, I'm like, oh, maybe I should put my head pressure here. Maybe I should grab her arm here. Like I wasn't sure, I was kind of faltering. And then one of my teammates, uh, Chris Curtis said, Roxy, you've forgotten more moves than we know. You just pick like three moves. Quit searching in the bucket for all these, you know, perfect techniques, just pick three and then just use those. I was like, okay, so that kind of makes sense because, you know, I've learned so many and I keep learning better ones and everybody's evolving too, you know? So um, there's always more to learn. I have, you know, there was so much that I can learn. What do you, uh, not unrelated to the fight, but what do you think has been the biggest change over MMA in terms of the actual fighting inside, not outside of the promotion and the cameras and everything, but the actual fighting, what have you noticed that's been changed the most? Okay, so, Think about in the past, jiu-jitsu fighters tended to win a lot. You know, they got their opponents down. Even from bottom guard, they were sweeping, they were arm barring, they were triangling, submitting. Now you don't really see a lot of submissions from guard. If you're on the bottom in guard, you're kind of screwed. Like, you're getting hit. You know, the top guy's good enough to defend those submissions. So along those lines, I think that 
you know, as MMA has developed, the t the um, uh, there are counters to the attacks, and then counters to those counters. So everything's everybody's learning all these counters and new improved techniques. So you have to keep learning the counters to the counters, right? So I think technique-wise, that's an evolution. You know, so many people can defend an armbar yeah. from guard. So yeah. like I've stopped trying to I pull. I used to pull guard. Yeah. I, you can't do that nowadays, right? But well, you still have to like the basics always have to come in and shine at the end. Like regardless of the evolution, you find out, find yourself on your back. It's, I've been doing this for 20 years. Right. You gotta you gotta know. And so go, uh, going back to Macy, do you think this is the biggest fight in the based on how much buzz she's generated? Do you think this is the biggest fight you could have outside of the championship fight, just based on how popular she's become lately? I think a fighter's biggest fight is their next fight. Every fight's super important in their career, and I always look at it that way. You know, you never know what the result is going to lead to, you know, whether it's, you know, a title fight by accident if someone doesn't make weight, or, you know, whether it's whatever, yeah. So, I don't know, maybe. I mean, Shevchenko was a pretty big fight, even though she was not, I don't, I don't think she was ranked. Um, who knows? And, and then in the one final one, uh, what did you make of Liz Carmouche's release, like kind of unceremoniously after her last fight against Valentin? Um, I actually wrote an article for Bloody Elbow about sports versus entertainment and comparing those two. So I think that might play a part of that. Like, you know, Liz is very strong, very skilled. Um, if MMA were 100% sport, there's no way she'd be released. But it's also half or however percentage you want to think of it, entertainment. And she did have not a great performance in her last fight. Um, other stuff. So I don't know. Like, I don't... I'm trying not to have feelings about it. It's just an unfortunate. It's unfortunate for her. Yeah. And I know I said one final one, but this just popped in my head. I noticed on your Instagram you were doing like, a, like a tips when you like weighed in and everything. So I'm curious, looking back in your early career, is there anything you wish, like a veteran of the sport, had told you that you now know now? Like I wish, I wish I knew this in like 2005. Oh, so much. You know, I didn't know how to cut weight back then. Um, we didn't have to go way back then, right? I fought at 135. I walked around at 140. I just didn't eat breakfast and sweat a little bit. But now, you know, um, I've learned the science behind weight cutting from Brian Caraway on the Ultimate Fighter season 18. I, pr I properly cut weight that way. When I first dropped to 125, I dieted too much and I just felt really weak. Um, that was my five fight losing streak. Um, but now, you know, I'm able to um, do things like sodium deprivation for a week, water loading, which flushes, flushes your system out, and then the salt bath at the end, but appropriately timed so you don't like have a bad recovery. So yeah, I, I mean, I wish I had known that back then. Well, thank you so much and good luck on Saturday. I appreciate you.